Hey, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Corbett, and welcome back for some more EU4, as if I play literally any other game. Now you may be familiar with the one state challenge I did a couple of weeks ago, but I'm here to introduce to you the one province challenge, brought to you by random ideas I have at 3am. Now an extension of that one province challenge will be to make the Holy Roman City, that's to say I will be controlling the entire HRE as a single free city. Or I become number one great power, basically whichever has happens first. Now this should be a fairly difficult challenge, but to ease the burden on myself, I have uh, decided to play as the most overpowered nation in the entire game. So obviously with the power of Ulm, this should be a breeze. Of course, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe for more EU4 challenges. And without further ado, let's begin. Now the rules for expansion are very simple. If I end up removing the free city reform, then I will have to go back to a previous save or I'll just lose the challenge. This means that technically I'm allowed to directly own provinces so long as I stick to one before the next day passes. So feeding vassals is completely acceptable. Other than that, I'm free to do this challenge however I like. So let's start off with our estates and I'll sell off the rest of my crown land. And there we go, just as expected, we sold out our entire country, which will grant the estate statutory rights to the burghers. Fortunately, our only province will end up being this zero autonomy capital, so that doesn't really affect us. So, the first order of business will be to attack Württemberg here. I think they would make for quite the valuable vassal here. And well, we do have to start somewhere, so let's get started. Well, that wasn't so bad. Oh, you poor fool, you've fallen for the classic blunder. And rip. And so we'll start off with a little bit of vassalization, just to save myself a little bit of aggressive expansion. And he's a little angry for now, but that's okay. Naturally, our conquests will bring us into Augsburg as we expand our vassal empire. There we go, we have our first reform, which will be yearly republican tradition, of course. Now, it's a bit of a risky move early on, but the other free cities in the Holy Roman Empire are pretenders which must be crushed. After all, there can only be one truly free city. So Konstanz will be annexed. And it'll take a little while, but I'll eventually annex Augsburg as well. And there's the Renaissance, which will take quite a considerably long time to get here. So I might have to end up developing that, depending on how long it takes. Alright, time for the first idea group. I think it's in our best interest to go ahead with Diplomatic, because through that we can get an additional 25% improved relations, which helps to decay our aggressive expansion. Ah, uh, and there we go. Alright, well now I have a bunch of money and nothing to spend it on, so I'm just gonna kick out a bunch of Diplo advisors until eventually I'll get an improved relations guy. There we go, our first Diplomatic idea. I'm just gonna rush through these until I grab my benign Diplomats. Ooh, hey, there we go. That's a pretty good event. So, less than uh, 20 years into the game and we're at 22 and a half innovativeness. Wasn't that a doozy of a rework there? And I'm gonna pull a bit of a cheeky move here. I'm gonna steal development from our subject, Württemberg, which will obviously make him pretty angry. Then I can very easily go and develop that land, which means I just got around six development for somewhere in the ballpark of 36 points per click. And that's where the real fun begins. Wait a second. Okay, so it looks like we have some crazy stuff going on down here. First of all, we have the uh, Bohemians going to war with Hungary. You know, makes sense. Pretty uh, pretty valid. Um, and then we just have the casual uh, War of Austrian Independence versus Bregenz. No idea what happened here. But uh, it appears that Bregenz got a personal union over Austria, which they were not too happy about. Which suddenly explains why Hesse is the emperor currently. Well... That's a bit of a problem, but it's not mine. And here we are, an extra 25% improved relations. And now to take care of Bavaria. Ah, oh, jeez, these battles are starting to get intense. It looks like we're rolling well enough to win, so that's no problem. Ah, finally. That was a pretty tough war, actually. But in the end, I can secure myself two provinces, including a fort, a bunch of money, and a humiliate. Now it'll be up to my vassals to grab claims on anything else we'd like to take. I guess at this point it would sort of make sense to make the anti-Austria league, so I'm gonna try and improve relations with Venice and see what we can do with that. Ah, there we go, finishing off our diplomatic idea group, which will give us that tech cost decrease. And in 1476, we've managed to bring the cost of Diplotech down to 349. 
Oh, I love this game. And if I take this admin tech right now, then I get an extra 2 innovativeness. Which is pretty good since it only costs 25 extra. Alright, next idea group. Probably going to end up being economic. The reason is for that development cost, and I can use my subjects to develop institutions, so I think it's still a good idea to try and grab that. And when I eventually finish off quantity as well, that'll give me an additional 10% dev cost reduction. And there we are, Switzerland has been 100%ed. So I'm gonna be taking these two provinces for my subject, taking all of his money, war reps, and humiliation. Oh, well, I guess it would make sense to go ahead and grab, uh... Strong duchies as well, wouldn't it? Sort of forgot about that being a thing. So now we're given two options for our tier 5 reform, which can either be Imperial Diplomacy, for plus 2 reputation and an extra relation, or I can get myself 25% land force limit modifier and 5,000 manpower. I think in this case, I'm gonna go with the land force limit modifier. Also, now that Austria isn't the Emperor, I'm kind of excited to find out where Burgundy's gonna go to? Eh, I could go to Hesse, I guess. Well, we'll find out at some point. Well, the aggressive expansion has gone down... enough. So I'll bring in Bohemia and Venice, and we'll go to war. So, further Austria will go to my subject, and they'll take full money and a humiliate. Well, that's a little bit awkward. I was planning to attack Bavaria myself without the intervention of a third power. But it looks like Bohemia has other plans. You know what? Fine, let's do this. Ooh, baby, the National Bank. One of my favorite events. Well, there goes Bavaria, and now we have a 10-year truce with them. So after getting a unique event, we're given the uh, pretty rare opportunity to try and uh, actually get rid of our estate statutory rights, which to be honest, I never thought would end up happening for the entire campaign. Yeah, it's pretty expensive. But you know what, it does beat selling the titles, so I'll do it. And so finally, we can get rid of estate statutory rights. Okay, now we're able to get ourselves Smithian Economics, which will give us an extra 20% development cost decrease. And so to develop in this province that my subject owns, it only costs 17 points. I imagine you can start to see exactly where I'm going with this. So for instance, if I dump a bunch of development into my subject here and then decide to concentrate that development, I will be getting 9 development in my capital. And this is basically the method we're going to be using to skyrocket Ulm to the largest province in the world. I mean, as it stands, we've probably already hit that number, but you know what I mean. Ah, finally, colonialism. Well, now that it's here, we can spawn it in and spread it in one of our subject's provinces. So let's get started. And there we are. Now that'll spread to our capital very quickly. And there we go, just one ducat to embrace. Okay, next war with Bavaria coming up pretty quick. Looks like our vassal has decided to grab some claims, which is very kind of him. So let's call in our allies and let's begin. Ooh, it looks like the Protestant Reformation is beginning, but uh, I'm kind of at war, so I can't flip yet. But I will be more than happy to later. Uh, here we are. The Burgundian succession here. Looks like they have gone over to Hesse, as I predicted. Ooh, that's a pretty interesting decision. So instead of deciding to directly inherit Burgundy, Hesse has decided to, well, balkanize them. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, swap over to Protestant. That'll give me a whole bunch of money, and of course, uh, everyone's gonna hate me, but that's okay. After all, I never really did anything with the uh, Catholic mechanics the entire time, but Protestant mechanics will allow me to use a bunch of things with my church power, such as, you guessed it, an extra 5% development cost, and other things, of course. But that also means I'm just gonna go ahead and enforce the religion of my subjects so that I can do at least something with my spare missionary strength. Ooh, also this land was uh, freshly conquered so I can go ahead and slam a whole bunch of dev into it. And then I can steal it all. <laughs> now it has been a pretty long time since we last went to war for our own reasons. And I have pretty small PP so I'm gonna have to go after Austria. And there we go. Next idea group. Which will obviously be influence. And rip. There goes Veen. Okay, well, this is a little bit awkward. I don't even know what's happening here. But the main point is, I can't exactly help you with that right now, bud, so I'm gonna have to say no to that one. And there goes the rest of Austria, which will give me these three provinces. I'll take some money, a humiliate, and some more reps. 
So now we have to be a little careful here. If I unpause, then we're going to have a couple of problems. But just before I give these away, I'm going to concentrate the development so that I don't get the, you know, opinion malice with my subject. So then we can hand all of those provinces off to him. And it'll actually be cheaper for him to core as well because it has less dev. And secondly, because I didn't actually take anything from this state, I can actually do it again. Which I'm not really sure if that's intended, but it's what we're allowed to do, so I'm going to do it. So essentially, I was able to concentrate development from these three provinces twice. You know, interestingly enough, it doesn't seem like it would actually be that hard to invade a free city. And Memmingen has kind of been getting on my nerves, you know, existing here. Hmm, well isn't this just a big mess? Oh, and I can take this for four innovativeness, so sure, why not? And there we are, past the 50 innovativeness mark in 1528, you know, as intended. Well, you certainly took a long time to take, but finally that's mine. And here it is, the moment we've been waiting for. Vassal force limit contribution plus 100%, as well as the policy, which will double that. So now my subjects pay 60% of their monthly tax to me, and my force limit is 43. <laughs> oh no, this is just getting ridiculous at this point. And it looks like Poland's been a little too aggressive recently, getting a massive coalition thrown against them. Now it might be a little late to join, but uh, just in case it isn't. And you know what? I may as well become the Protestant Defender of the Faith. That'll give me some extra prestige and manpower that I could use. Ooh, it's not looking too good for Poland these days. And rip Poland. Well, that's what you get for trying to invade the HRE. You know, I think the AE has decayed for long enough, so let's just declare. Alright, I've also been feeding these provinces a whole bunch of devs so that I can eventually take it, and it looks like this day has come. And surprisingly, he doesn't even care that much. We're about halfway into the video, so it's time for your trivia question. In my I Need to Ezo modded campaign, I asked you guys, what year did the Ezo Republic exist during? And the first person to get it right was Kofan, with the correct answer of 1869. So for today's Ulm-related trivia question, I ask you, which very famous person was born in Ulm? I'll give you a hint, they were a scientist. The first person to get the correct answer will have their comment featured in the next video, just like this one. Now back to your regularly scheduled waiting simulator. Oh wow, I've actually never seen this event either. The City League Suggestion. So, basically like the Hanseatic League, except a lot less cool. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. In fact, it seems like a win-win to me. You know, assuming it never gets dissolved or anything. Well, it's been a little while since we, you know, last went to war. And Württemberg does have all of these claims over here. So why not? Let's just go ahead and take them. Yo, hold on a second. France actually found the Fountain of Youth? Wait, I thought we were kidding. Uh, good for them, I guess. Ah, uh, it's that time of the game again. Time to concentrate development from my subjects. Now this does put a smile on my face. There we go, 28th of December. Taking this much should be no problem at all. Oh, well that was fast. So, number seven great power Ulm here with uh, one province still. Funnily enough, there's a higher than 0% chance that we could actually just vassalize Cologne for free. Actually, because he's Catholic, I don't know if he's gonna end up having high enough opinion. I could definitely vassalize Anhalt though. Yeah, let's do that. All right, time for the next text. And the next idea group, which will be quantity. And there we go. I might also end up having some decent luck doing the same thing with Lippe. Well, that was easy. Now that is a pretty big coalition. I'd say there's like a 50% chance it could kill me. I like those odds. Or maybe it'll just never form. Right then. Anyway, time for our final quantity idea, which will give me land force limit modifier and diplo rep, and development cost and more land force limit modifier. So now my force limit is 146. Not sure what I'm gonna use 146 force limit on, since I don't really make that much manpower. But I'm sure I'll figure it out. Wait a minute, isn't this like as big as the coalition is going to get in the HRE? Well, let's put that theory to the test. So here we are after finishing up the entire war. A coalition like this brings in practically everyone that's left in the HRE. 
So let's test our little theory. Well, so far it looks like no one's joining. Oh, there we go, Frankfurt Goslar. Well, that's actually okay because I'm gonna declare war on Brandenburg here and I'm gonna try and see if I can split the coalition in two or just try and make it, you know, much smaller. So let's call in all our friends and let's go after Brandenburg. Well, it's no league war, but at least it's better than nothing, right? Yeah, this should be a fairly easy war. Well, that was short-lived, but at least we get to take a little more land. Hey, there we are, a quarter way to a thousand dev. Wait a second, is the coalition dissolving? Wait a second, you weren't supposed to do that. Well, I guess that means I get to conquer again. So as long as I don't anger anyone outside of the HRE, it looks like I can do, well, just about whatever I want. Oh boy, wouldn't you know it. The consequences of my own actions. So once upon a time, I, uh, converted Brittany over to Protestantism, because I thought it would be funny, but now France is attacking them, and I'm the defender of the faith. So that's fun. Oh, and I'm gonna say no, by the way. Stay angry, I don't care. And finally, we have it. The 25 Max Absolutism. And not a second too soon. Now, I'm not sure if this is a good idea or not. These are some really big provinces. I think I'll just wait until I grab admin efficiency, and then hopefully that'll decrease my AE a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I'll be back in a couple minutes. Or really, just a few seconds through the power of editing. Now, we can go ahead and grab our technologies. And it looks like we would just barely accidentally get Denmark in here. But by taking on his foreign debt, influencing him, and giving him some gifts, we can magically make that disappear. In fact, it's worked so well that I can even go ahead and grab the third province. So this is the peace deal we'll be leaving with. So it looks like we have a small coalition on our hands here. It's probably a good idea to take care of this before it becomes a real problem. So we'll be going after Bayeroy to try and conquest it. Whether or not it happens is, eh, well, we'll find out. Of course, fighting a coalition is not one of the things you want to spend your time doing, so I'm going to try and peace out of it as soon as I can. Okay, the war goal's been taken, and I'm ready to leave this whole mess behind. And just before the Age of Reformation ends, I'm going to start the Golden Era, because I'm probably not going to be able to enact it until maybe the Age of Revolutions. There's also a fairly decent chance that I finish this run before the Age of Revolutions, so I'm just going to start it. Fun fact, with all those modifiers, that actually makes this one province roughly 140% cheaper to develop than normal. Yeah, and this 19 dev province costs 7 to develop, which is the cheapest thing we have. So I'm just gonna go develop a bunch of stuff real quick. Now that is a nice concentrate development click. Well, there we go. That's one thing filled out already. Now I just need to fill the damn thing. At first it was kind of funny that my subjects wanted independence, but now it's sort of like not a joke anymore and they kind of really want independence. I think I may have been stealing a little bit too much development off of them. But when you see dev costs like this, it's pretty hard not to. Maybe the 1000 dev ulm was never meant to be. Well, 344 isn't bad. Maybe we can try for 500. So I put Württemberg on Scudage, which will require him to pay me a ton of money, and eventually he'll have to take out some loans to continue paying the extortionate fee, and then I can go ahead and pay off his debt, which over time should hopefully reduce his liberty desire. Not sure if that's gonna work, but we're giving it a shot. Also next idea group, I think we're gonna go with Plutocratic, because it has a policy with influence to directly reduce liberty desire. So I did a little bit of, uh, you know, army reforming here and there, so now I've ended up with a total of 248,000 men, uh, which for the most part aren't really gonna do much other than deter coalitions, which is, you know, the point. But uh, yeah, the real problem is still that I've been taking way too much dev from my subjects, or at least, you know, these two. So I'm probably gonna have to leave them be for a while. But that's okay, because at the end of the game, I'm gonna come back and take it all anyway. Okay, the next war will be against Austria, so let's see how much we can take. And we're all done, just have to wait for the aggressive expansion to tick down just a little more. And there we go. I'm gonna have to start doing things this way, where I take the land personally, consolidate it, and then I can hand it back to my subject. And by granting him provinces this way, it sort of reverses the effect of taking all of that development. There we go, I finished up with plutocratic ideas. 
which makes our subjects less rebellious, and that can also give us some additional yearly Republican tradition. We can also make our re-elections cost 10% less. And at this point, it would probably be a good idea to swap from frequent elections to consolidation of power. Also, with those policies, my force limit has become the highest in the world, a total of 337. Ooh, there we go. 400 development in the capital. That's a good start. We'll probably end up reaching 500. Not sure about 1,000 yet, though. Now that I think about it, it doesn't really matter if Venice and Denmark join the coalition. Hey, fun fact, this has actually taken me 14 hours to record so far. And I don't know why, but it only occurs to me just about right now that if I take over the entire HRE, I'm actually no longer going to be a free city. And at that point, we won't actually be the free city empire, will we? So what I'm probably going to do is end up taking all of the Germanic culture provinces that are in North Germany, South Germany, and maybe the Lowlands. Because ironically enough, we actually need to have Bohemia stay alive. With that being said, the only thing left to do is to clean up the rest of Germany. So, let's get started. And something tells me we're probably not going to need this municipal self-defense anymore. I think Imperial Diplomacy is a much better fit these days. Ah yes, 9 Diplo Rep, as the game intended. Not gonna lie, it is getting a little bit boring in here. So, let's spice things up a little bit with uh, extra aggressive expansion. Oh yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> so I took so many provinces in one piece deal that I ended up completing a mission that I never thought I was going to complete. And there's this one, and there's this one. But unfortunately, I will never be able to complete this last one. Right then, anyway. Wait, there's no coalition? What was the point then? Well... And suddenly, I've just learned a second way to make sure my subjects stay very loyal. Basically, we just gotta bankrupt them a little bit. Let's build a couple of castles for them, shall we? This will cost them an additional 21 ducats per month, which they're gonna have to ask me to help them pay off. Hey, there we go. Finally went ahead and did it. 502 development ohm. Oh, looks like it's finally happening. France and Castile are going to war. Ah, uh, fine. Well, Castile didn't put up much of a fight. Well, I think it's safe to say that using debt to control your subjects is absolutely viable. Oh wow, that looks like a pretty bad coalition. Oh well. So, uh, I've had pretty much nothing interesting to say for the past, like, uh, hour and a half. It's really sort of been more of the same, managing subjects and occasionally declaring another war. So hopefully we end up finishing this by 1700, or else the real challenge will be me trying to maintain my sanity. Okay, next and probably our last idea group will be trade. Well, at least now things are starting to look a little interesting. How about we take care of that real quick? It is sort of a weird coalition in the first place, since uh, even at full strength it would probably be only two-thirds of my size. Well, it's not my funeral. Hey, there we are. Finally, a hundred innovativeness. It only took until 1676, but we finally got there. Well, there we are at 757 Davin Ulm. We're not too far off now. Okay, so we may have made all of Europe very angry. But on the bright side, there are only a couple of provinces left before I can just finally finish this thing. And just another little moment to celebrate. We actually managed to hit minus a thousand opinion from aggressive expansion, which is quite nice. Apparently the tales of my war crimes are so far spread that even people in India are getting a little bit concerned. But no worries, as it'll all be over soon. Finally, the nationalism CB. It's a shame we only get it right now, right as we're about to end off this whole thing, but I'm glad to have it nonetheless. Oh, just look at how little aggressive expansion this is. Absolutely beautiful. So I was uh, sieging down Toledo real quick, and then I noticed um, they decided to decorate a little bit. They still can't use it, but you do you, I guess. Ah, <sighs> finally. Well, that certainly took long enough then, didn't it? So, there you have it. Basically the entire HRE controlled by one free city. There are a couple of free cities and a few princes left, but I'm uh, really just 
not willing to continue this game. Well, except for the fact that we can't just leave Ulm at less than a thousand development when I have the easy opportunity to fix that problem. So, let's do that real quick. So I just did a bunch of developing with whatever points I had left. Let's see how high we can get Ulm's development. So after making most of my subjects very angry, we can see that Ulm's total development has ended off at 1019. That's probably by far the most developed province I'm going to create for a very long time. And I'm glad that we actually managed to get Ulm to 1000 dev. But there we go, it's finally done. And there we are, still a free city in the end. Would I recommend this challenge to anyone? Absolutely not. Out of the 17 or so hours it took me to record this whole thing, I maybe ended up enjoying about three of them. The rest is spent messing around with subject interactions and waiting for aggressive expansion to decay. So finishing a campaign like this is kind of a weird flex because in the end you still had approximately zero fun. 1000 dev ohm, 10 out of 10, would suffer again. Here's the economy, here are the ideas, and here's the military. But thank you all for watching, this is Corbett deciding to do something meaningful with his life for once, and as always, have a fantastic day. And just at the end of the video, I would like to give a massive thank you to all of the wonderful people over at Patreon for the month of May. Starting in the general tier, we have Quiet Guy, Brennan Arsenault, Ben Greenhagen, Torvald, Dire Revenger, and Farron. In the Prince tier, we have Snow Raven, Rockbox2020, Robert Kaleno and Bouncer Steve. In the King tier, we have Chewy Shoot and Natsuki. In the Elector tier, we have TFLJ Martis. And in the Conqueror of Worlds tier, we have The Watcher. Thank you guys so much for your pledges this month, it means a lot to me, and I truly just cannot thank you enough.